Hey everybody, so today we're getting a little more crafty than last time. I'm going to show you guys how to create a really neat looking decorative vase. What you'll need is um, a clear glass vase. I got mine from Value Village since, you know, there's no point in really going purchasing something that costs very much because we're going to be covering it anyways. You just want to make sure that it's not a vase that has too much texture or too many um, grooves or anything like that. So I'll show you what I picked up at Value Village. I got two different vases. Um, wasn't really sure which ones I, which one I was going to use of the two, but I think I'm going to use this skinnier one. So I got this one here, and this one here I paid $2.99 for. And then I also got this one here, which I think is this is the one I'm going to actually use, and I paid $1.99 for that, so that's a great deal. Second thing you're going to need is some glue. When I first started doing this thing, I used school glue, I guess it was that was clear, but it was sort of tinted blue, and I don't know if they make it anymore, or it's just hard to find, but I couldn't find it anywhere, so I picked up this 3-in-1 Advanced Craft Glue from Walmart. It's crystal clear, acid-free, and waterproof. Acid-free is, is really good whenever you're doing any kind of crafts. It'll, you know, it ensures that your glue doesn't start to yellow over time um, and waterproof is obviously good because you know you're gonna probably want to wash it and you want to submerge it in water so that's what I got um, you also need some paint brushes I got these ones these are for glass and ceramic I also got these at Walmart there's a few different ones in there I'll probably use this sort of bigger one here and then I'm not sure small one for the paint which I'll show you in a second so you need some paint brushes, you don't necessarily need a pack, you just need one or two. Um, but this is what I got and it was fairly inexpensive. For To seal it at the end, what I bought was I went to Michael's and I got this triple thick crystal clear glaze. It says it has a bright glass like coating so I figured that would be perfect. So this is what I bought. And then for the gold accent that we're going to apply at the end. I had a hard time finding the paint that I used in the past, but this one seemed like a good idea to me. It's a gold color little, I think you use it for um, model cars and things like that. So it's going to make it a nice gold look and it'll look like it's actually plated in gold. So this I got at Michael's, but I'm sure you could find it at Walmart or any other place that sells the model cars and stuff like that. Now, the next thing, the final thing you're going to need for this project are some decorative uh, lunch napkins or beverage napkins. I picked up a few different kinds and I wasn't sure which to use, so I'll show you what I got here. I got this sort of black and white sort of flowery pattern one. I got this one on sale, this sort of brightly colored flowers, and then zebra print because I love zebra print, I love animal print, so I got that one. Um, and you really want to look for napkins that don't have any sort of, I guess, sol solid pattern to them, like a plaid or anything like that, that might not work out too well with the straight lines and stuff like that. Anything else I would say goes but I like to find ones that have um, different sort of patterns in them where I can tear out the, um, the different pieces that I'm going to want to use. So I got my napkins at Target. I had a hard time to find decorative napkins, which is really strange as you think they would be anywhere. I went to Michael's, they didn't have any there, and um, so yeah, I got mine at Target. I'm sure you could use something like a tissue paper as well if you can find a really cool tissue paper that you like the pattern of. I, I did find some at Michael's that were leopard prints, which I thought would be really, really cool looking, but um, 
I wanted to use the napkins for the purpose of this tutorial just to show you guys how I've always done it in the past. So I think that's everything you'll need. Just make sure that you lay out some uh, newspaper or plastic bag or something for your work surface because you don't want to get any of this glue or this paint will not come off of you know something that you really don't want to get paint on so just make sure that you cover your work surface and then you're ready to go let's get started so as you can see I've covered my table with a garbage bag just to keep clean up easy and make sure I don't get anything that I don't want on my table so I've decided to go with the zebra print I'm gonna try that if it doesn't work then uh, I guess you won't be watching this <laughs> So let's get started on this awesome project. As you can see, I've covered my table with this garbage bag. As I said, you want to cover your surface because you don't want to get any um, any paint or anything like that on something that you like. And also, I just wanted to note one thing. I've changed the glue I'm going to use. I'm going to use this glue instead. It's not clear, but this is the best I can do since this original bottle of glue I was going to use says waterproof and I was hoping that it was waterproof once dry and as I was afraid of you cannot mix it with water and you need to be able to mix your glue with water. So hopefully you watch this video all the way through before you go buy your stuff and if not I really apologize. Um, that one just didn't work out so I'm using this. Alright so the first thing you want to do is take your glue a good amount in your dish. So you're going to need, I know I forgot to mention this, you're going to need a little plastic dish, um, like a disposable dish or something that you don't care about putting glue into, and you're also going to need a little cup of water. I, I know I should have mentioned that in my intro, along with all my other supplies, but I forgot. You want to water down your glue so it's not so thick, so that you can paint it on really nice and easily and it's not going to be all sticky and tacky. So you put your glue in. You might need more later, but we're going to start with this much for now. I don't know if you can see that or not. They're both white. And then we're going to add a little bit of water, a little at a time. You don't want to dilute it too much. You just want to make the glue not as sticky, a little more easy to spread with your brush. And this glue should dry clear, so it shouldn't be a problem using this glue instead of the other glue. I was hoping for a clear glue, but like I said, I could not find a clear glue. Alright, that looks good. So you really don't, really don't need very much water in there at all. You just want it to be a little more liquidy. And then we're ready to go. I'm just going to set this over here so I can show you what I'm going to do. So, you want to take your napkin and you want to separate the plies or layers so that you just get one piece. Take off the backing. Sometimes this is easy, sometimes it's not. You might have to try a couple, a couple napkins, but it shouldn't be too bad. So remove the backing from the neck. Mine's getting all wet. Like that. And then, depending on what your pattern is, you're going to want to look at it and see which piece which parts of it you actually like. Um, I'm going to start doing my vase up near the, the ridge so that I can tuck my napkin under here. You can start at the bottom, but I just find it easier to start there. So I'm going to look, kind of tear a piece that's sort of straight at the top. You don't want to tear too big of pieces. You want to kind of go a little smaller. You can if, if the piece, if your napkin has a nice bigger piece that you're looking to include, you can kind of um, start in the middle. I'm going to 
do maybe a piece like this size. And then I might even be able to take, it's better the less backing you have because you want it to be semi-transparent. So I'm going to take that off and then I'm going to get my glue and then I'm going to start painting where I want it to go. Just like that. Just do a big piece, it doesn't matter. Then I'm going to placing my torn pieces and then to smooth it out you want to use your same brush you have your glue on and kind of gently manipulate it with your brush. You don't want too many wrinkles but some of the wrinkles actually adds to the texture and texture and the effect that we're going for here. It's, it's not, not a terrible thing so keep that in mind. You don't have to be perfect with this. different piece. I'm going to take the pink piece off. I don't want those. So, the zebra print might be tricky because it is lines and they're not going to quite match up. But, I'm sure we can still manage to make it look really nice. And you don't, they don't have to be rectangular pieces. They're just any size piece you like, any shape you like. Just use your judgment to make it look awesome. So you want to match up your edges as best you can. At the end you might have some little gaps that you might want to go in and tear some tiny pieces and fill those in. Just match them up as best you can. covered and you're satisfied with um, the pattern you have and that you filled all the little holes and I've gone and made sure that I've covered the bottom with napkins as well so that whenever I spray it with the um, clear coat it's going to create um, a uniform coverage so that you won't have any possible areas where water can get in and, and ruin it. So once you've done that, you're just going to want to let the whole thing dry and then we're going to go outside and we're going to spray it with our clear coat. Alright, so now that it's been sprayed and, and it's dried fully, um, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to tape the outside edge around the lip and around the inside edge. Alright, so I've got it all taped around the inside and around the outside, just loosely. Um, and now we're going to add our gold accent paint. Alright, so there we go. 
we've got the gold accent on it. We just want to let this dry fully and then once it's dry we'll take off the tape and we'll probably want to spray it with the clear coat one more time just to seal everything all in one all in one seal so you got no so you've got no seams and then and then we'll be done. I've given my vase one last coat of of clear spray and it's nice and sealed now and I, and I can wash it anytime I need to wash it and I don't have to worry about it getting ruined. Um, the zebra print one didn't really work out as well as I was hoping it would so I did do a second one just to show you guys how good it really can look if you have the right um, pattern napkin and whatnot so I just wanted to show you guys the second one I did. I used the other face I got and this one turned out really well so you can see that what I would do is I would find the pieces and the patterns on the napkin that I really really like and then I I tear those out separately and then I position them in a way that looks appealing to the, to the shape of the vase and just kind of making sure everything's spaced out nicely and then for the in-between spots where the pattern wouldn't be, I would take little pieces of just the white napkin and fill in those places so you get kind of a frosty look with a, with a really neat design. So as you can see this can really turn out really nice. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and I hope um, you guys will attempt to do this on your own. These make really really great gifts for any occasion and don't forget Christmas is coming so you keep this in mind for, for you know the person who really loves homemade gifts and it, it makes a great gift for that. If anyone does attempt to do this project on their own I would really love to see the results that you guys can get from it. You know be creative, work with it, do your own thing, be be experimental with it. I'm sure you'll you'll come up with something really great and you guys can send me those pictures and and I'd really really like to see them. So I guess that's it then. We're all done. The vases look great. I just wanted to remind you guys to go to my Facebook page and like me on there. You can also follow me on Twitter and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you'll be able to keep up to date on when I'm I am posting new videos for you guys. Also, um, don't forget to go to my blog. I, I do a blog post every Thursday and every second week I have my videos included in there as well. So go to my blog and I'll put all that information down in the description of this video so you guys know where to find me anywhere on the web. So that's it for now, and I hope you guys have a great day. See you next time, everybody. Bye.